the way, in our development, we have not really been able to recognize what our emotions are about. Okay? And if you go back to the cycle, that's the first part. Enhance emotional literacy. To be able to have a good ability to recognize your emotions and stay a name to them, it actually helps your body accept them better, it validates it, right? and then you're able to use it in its proper way because every emotion has a purpose. Okay? Now, if any of you wrote down emotions as emo, that doesn't count. Okay? Because I know that whenever I deal with students, they tell me, yeah, I'm just feeling emo. Okay? Now, generally, in all these years of training, we ask our, to our audience, how do you feel? What do you think are the usual responses I get? Fine, yes. And fine is so broad. What does fine mean? I'm fine. Is that good? Is that bad? I'm fine. Okay, so I have to listen to that tone of voice. Am I fine or am I fine? All right, so it's just one word, but it doesn't really help describe it. Okay, so we need to think about our emotional literacy and how we can be better at it. Okay, so this is where many times to just tell yourself how you're feeling at that point is really very important because once there's acceptance, we are able to do something about it. All right, so we've heard maybe about 15 of them. Now, when you listen to all the different types of emotions, if you had to categorize them, or would there be any way of categorizing them? You seem to have a lot more negative emotions compared to positive ones. So let's think about some of the positive ones. There was excited, there was surprised, which could be positive or negative, and happy, right? But what I'd like you to do today, ladies and gentlemen, is to stop thinking of them as negative emotions. The moment we tell ourselves it's negative, we think it's bad. And when we think it's bad, what do we try to do? We suppress it. And we suppress it, and we think we're in control. In the end, it starts to control us. Okay? So every emotion has a purpose. What we want to do is not call it a negative emotion, but perhaps an unpleasant one. Okay, the more unpleasant it seems to be, then it tends to trigger certain reactions in us. Okay, so what is our biggest problem? If you look at the video, what do you think was the biggest problem in both those ladies? They had high, unpleasant emotions, and what were they not able to do? Bring their emotions down, or bring it away from its unpleasantness so that they could think better. Okay? And have you ever been in that kind of situation where your emotions are so high but you can't think straight?